building up the audience that you can respond to is really important for that because they will then all like it and then their friends will like it and their other friends will like it. So it's always doing something, building an audience that likes what you're doing is really important. You know, and if you can resonate with them in some way, then it's going to spread. Hey Hatchlings, welcome to the Motion Hatch podcast. I'm your host, Hayley Akins. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. This is the Motion Hatch podcast. We are on episode 40. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. This week we've got an awesome episode for you, so do stay tuned. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening. If you've been listening for a while, I really appreciate you. If you're brand new here, please do make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We talk about the business side of motion design and animation. We've got so many good episodes coming up for you. I'm really excited for this week's episode because I spoke to Tom and Henry, who are twins that both work at Golden Wolf. Now, Golden Wolf is an animation studio in New York and in London. It was really, really cool to talk to them both about social media. So if you're thinking about doing more Instagram stuff and you want to know how to get more clients on Instagram, definitely stay tuned for this. They've got 90,000 followers on Instagram, which is pretty incredible. And we talked all about how they got those followers and also about how they make projects in their studio for social media and how it helps them get clients so this was a really really fun one it was just actually fun to chat to them because they're super cool guys but it was also really insightful and i know it's going to help you all with your social media so stay tuned here we go Hey, Henry and Tom, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up? So you're both twins, and I don't know whether they'll be able to tell you apart when people are just listening to audio, but it should be interesting. And you both work at Golden Wolf. Do you want to tell us how that happened? Well, it's a long story, and we keep it, keep it short story. So, well, first of all, the voice thing, we don't know. We probably do sound quite similar. So it could be like someone talking to themselves. So it might be quite bizarre, but let's, let's roll with it. Quite manically, yeah, when I thought yeah, as well. Let's go. So how do we work together? And well, basically, we have been working together our entire lives. We studied the same at university. Uh, we had the same interests. We sort of had the same friends. And, you know, being twins, it's kind of, that's what you do. You know, you've got your best mate hanging around all the time. We went to Portsmouth University and we studied animation together. And we left Portsmouth Animation and into the wide world. And Henry was a lot keener than I was. So I, I was kind of happy just working in a supermarket. Basically, I applied for as many opportunities as possible to get in with the animation industry, considering we came out as three really animators was looking for uh, games work, anything think we could pick up. And lucky enough, I managed to get an interview at a design studio called I Love Dust, and they're still really good friends of ours. I went down for an interview at I Love Dust, and I met the staff and the, uh, basically our boss, Mark, at that time. And um, I went for my interview in the pub, because it's a very small um, design studio, I took my brother with me. It was in Emsworth, just outside of Portsmouth, a little shipping town, very sleepy. And as I had my interview, I spotted Tom walking down the road. He pops in to say uh, for a beer and um, <laughs> stops me having my interview, Mark, and uh, basically turns around, freaks out, there's seen double, says, what does he do? I was like, well, Tom compliments me very well. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he does the backgrounds and I do the animation. Yeah, he was like, we well, well, get you both in. Yeah, and a few more meetings later, meeting our now boss, um, Ingi. Yeah, we were hired to uh, work making illustrations move. So, yeah, very, very lucky. Tom still only wants a beer. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just walked down the road, basically, <laughs> and went into a pub on my day off and uh, got a job. So, I mean, that's... If, if you've got a twin, it helps, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, it seems like you set it up. Like, no, you're like, yeah. what well, was that? Right, I'm doing this interview. So what you got to do, just walk past and make it seem like, oh, what are you doing here? Well, the, the, actual, uh, the actual truth of that was I was in the pub up, up the road and I'm late, I was a bit lazy. So I decided I'd go I head down the hill instead of going up to the other one. And they closed at lunchtime, being an old worldy village pub. And I was like, all right, I'll just go down to that one nice one down on the river. What's down there? And turns out it's a whole career of animation for me. Oh, well, <laughs> what a delight. I'm, I'm sure everyone listening is like, damn, why don't I have a twin? I'm sure it's like a, a unique selling point or something. <laughs> some, you'll be surprised how many twins there are in the creative industry. So maybe, you know, good techniques, you know, it's always about learning. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe walking around after people's interviews is the best way to get a job. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 maybe. A two for one in some cases. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really funny. So, do you want to tell us a bit about your roles now? What you do at Golden Wolf? My job, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, um, we've we've been with the studio as Golden Wolf for the um, last five years, and we were also working with Isle of Dust as the studio was Isle of Dust Animation Department for five years previously. For our careers, we were um, the uh, 3D generalists, working in pretty much all aspects of the production and creative um, process up until today where we've gone to more managerial roles you know looking after the studio um, operations and my job is to do resourcing I do talent management and the internal creative development for um, you know social where I wear many hats and a very similar thing for you right yeah a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff and yeah I kind of like support the team here I do a lot of pipeline a lot of technical directing and sort of you know I've done it many times, you know, so I can have the guys and the new fresh young guys come in and sort of work out how we're going to make these things and sort of support and make cool stuff. Are you doing like similar jobs or you're sort of doing stuff that sounds like it's like slightly concentrated on different areas maybe? Or Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like we always have. We've never really done the same job. Like we've never, we've always tried to complement each other. We've, we've So Henry at the very beginning was animation. He made it, he made things move. I did the rest of it. I did the backgrounds and the, and the lighting and, you know, the texturing. So we come in, coming from a 3D background and now plonking ourselves and developing and working with the sort of the similar and the same people for the last last 10 years, we've kind of now fallen ourselves into a 2D studio and or worked on, made ourselves into a 2D studio. Yeah, and it's all about, you know, as a studio, we're an entertainment studio through and through, as Golden Wolf is. And yet our career paths are, are slightly separating in what we're we're doing at the moment and that's generally just because it's the natural progression of becoming uh, from a smaller studio to a, a larger house you know like um we we've gone from a five five man team uh, to 24 full-time staff you know and as going Wolf, we fluctuate up to maybe 40 or 50 people when we're busy you know with freelancers externally and then like in house we fill up pretty quick here and then also the little studio that we have set up in new york you know that we're trying to grow at the moment so yeah it's just a natural progression for careers yeah yeah that's awesome so I wanted to talk to you both a bit about social media because I recently saw you do a talk at video co-pilot live event in London uh, yeah and it was really really good oh, so I wanted you. to so much. dig a little bit into that kind of thing so Golden Wolf has like 83,000 followers on Instagram which is incredible oh my uh, yeah, it's mental. <laughs> so do you want to tell us like about how that happened and how you started thinking about social media and why you thought it was important? I mean, how, how did it happen? I think it's out of interest. And I think really there's no magic scenario or thing you can do to build up following like that apart from, but there are a few techniques and tricks that you can work out to build up an audience. And um, it, it's not been easy you know it's it's been a, a long start and a long roll up to get to build up followers but really you know you're f- like focusing your attention on our creative you know doing entertainment stuff uh, entertaining people and keeping it relevant to our interests kind of built our following that way as a studio you know people following us because they're seeing little silly shorts and little silly and really fun like you know unique bold animation which is obviously not in our eyes considered to be created in many places out there so yeah your question was how do you get eighty three thousand followers as a studio well i don't Um, think that was necessarily my (laughs) question i just think like what kind of made golden wolf concentrate on that as an area because obviously it's a lot of work to keep kind of pushing these gifts out well little videos out all the time and yeah it is cool i think tommy you can probably explain a little bit more about like as a studio, when we were a little bit smaller, a smaller team, you know, we were really fascinated with social media. I think you can probably explain that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, I mean, it all goes, yeah, it all, was, all goes back to sort of when we're working with the design team and the designers making, making these illustrations move. We were just having a laugh. We were having a great time doing it. We, and that's with anything, with any passion, with animation, you've got to have fun. Otherwise, you know, there's no point doing it. You've got to have fun with your job. 
we stumbled across this website called Found or Found, you know, um, if anybody remembers it. And I'm like, it's quite a... It was unique. It was, it was 10 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was one of the first, like, Pinterest. It was before, you know, potentially before Tumblr. And it was also regarded as quite a great resource for designers and basically so, yeah. animators. Yeah, Found was a great... It is a really good platform. And it was a really good platform until it um, unfortunately got shut down of um, looking for... Um, great design you know great reference and it was an invite only platform so only it was curated by designers initially for designers and it got a bit weaker later on down the years but the idea was that you had one invite and you share it would share it out with your friend who was a designer and then he'd give one to his friend but we kind of cheated the system and we kind of shared it around the studio so we all managed to get an account so we'd look at this all the time and then we realized that you could cheat the system if a certain amount of people liked it at a certain intervals so within the first say half an hour of posting up an image they went to the front page so we do this constantly all the time so anytime there was a new piece of work to put out on social media uh, or put it out in a portfolio piece we'd we'd throw it up on found and then everyone in the studio would like at the same time we go straight to the front page and we've really found like we we're hacking the system we started getting eyes on people ringing us up agencies ringing us up clients ring, uh, like phoning in and going like I've uh, seen you work on found, it's on the front page, and we realised it's really important to be there first you know, the, at the front of things. It was kind of a total hack and a really big cheat, right? Yeah, it was basically finding the algorithm. It's like finding what 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 this piece of software or what this website does and what can it do for you. So in our case, at the very beginning, it was found and it was getting these pictures and getting our images and our little gifts in front of clients and agencies and, and other artists to become, to become more popular. So it's very sort of same format as kind of what Instagram does now, what, what Facebook does, really. It's pretty much the same algorithm. And we kind of went, hey, look, we're getting phone calls from these people and the studios get more work from just this website and us being able to make sure our pictures go to the front page. So we're like, oh, it's important. It's really important for us to have this constant sort of stream of, Social, being social, I suppose. Yeah, and like how, so then moving on to, to modern day, is like how do we keep that idea of basically getting your work in front of people and it's Instagram, you know, it's it's using these social accounts that we have and we all have today and um, basically getting your work on in the public eye. And I think the idea is that we, we never changed really what we were doing. We were still cheating the system. We were just still getting our friends to like it, but we had more friends. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it kind of works I suppose it sort of snowballs into, into a bigger thing yeah yeah so do you think um I don't know like tons about the Instagram algorithm do you think that kind of thing still works where it's like you need to get like probably like a certain amount of likes in the first hour or something I think it probably just works something like that I'm not right in the deep on like how Facebook have coded Facebook and how it works <laughs> yeah. but I kind of feel <laughs> yeah. like with the algorithm of the Facebook it's like you're your image you up, you upload it will then will be seen by a certain percentage, and it'll be a lower percentage. And if that, that if those people um, that view that view that image react with that image, that reaction then is spread out and it is then sort of. And then some other people, their friends or the, your friends who are with their friends, will see it. You know, and it's this ripple effect where you you have five people see it, and they, if all five people like that, then maybe. 10 more people see it, and if all 10 of them like it, and that's pretty much how things go viral, if that makes sense. And we're just doing it to focus, again, with Golden Wolf, uh, we're doing it for, to entertain ourselves with the work we're creating with our 2D animation, motion graphics, with our 3D stuff, but building up the audience that you can respond to is really important for that, because they will then all like it, and then their friends will like it, and their friends will like it. So it's always doing something, building an audience that likes what you're doing is really important, you know, and if you can resonate with them in some way, then it's going to spread. I heard there's like three ways, like people use social media. So like either to like entertain, you know, like you guys are mainly doing that, and then or to like teach something, or also like provide some other kind of value there's maybe another one in there but I've totally forgot but like when you're posting stuff you should like think of it in that way I think like is this entertaining someone or teaching someone or providing some sort of value to someone else and not just be like about like oh look at me you know <laughs> or like something that people aren't going to care about I guess yeah and there's no reason why it can't be all of those things at the same time you know 
because the content we're creating is it's great for our artists to try something new. It's fun to do, and we love doing it, and we want to be entertaining. We want to keep putting these these lovely pieces of motion out there. It's good to show like our potential clients as well, like the styles um, the studio can do. You know, because if you don't create the work, you're never going to be asked to make it. So we create a style that we maybe not, or like do a, a small piece of looping animation that we'd never be asked to do as a client piece of work. And it's again to show that the variety of things that we can create as a as an entertainment studio. Mm. So there's many reasons why we do it, but there's also no reason why you know when we post up something fun that we create. So for an example, that we we create this ice cream short looping gif last summer, and again it was just a little bit of fun. And one of our really talented effects animators, Tim wanted to create this this short loop so he created it it was really awesome and then after that then we use the breakdowns and we show them and we post them on twitter and then educate people on, on the process and how we create these things again there's there's no right or wrong way to make an animation or a film but um people do love to see the techniques behind your way and your workings at golden wolf we are flexible we just use the resource we have so yeah, that makes sense. I think I've found this when I've posted uh, more behind the scenes kind of stuff that like people really like that. I think it's because they can see like, oh, this is how it's done, you know, and that normally gets a lot more traction than if you just post the final thing. Obviously, you can do both, but I found that's quite a good way to yeah, get people's attention. Yeah, everybody wants to learn. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to see the magic that goes behind it you know i find it fascinating and it's not it's not me and henry are working here in golden wolf there's another 20 20 people downstairs and they're all very talented people in their own rights and they all can do this entirely on their own as freelancers but we're trying to choosing to do something you know as, as together as a pack as a greater team of people to be better sometimes i don't see some of these gifts and i, I walk around the room and i'm like how did you make that that's incredible so it's always i i find that i find the magic you know as well from these things and it is all magic. It's not hard work. It's just purely <laughs> yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah more it's magic. not years and years of training or anything. No, no, no. And, like, it's just practice. <laughs> there's no practice involved. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that it's kind of interesting that you're obviously putting a lot into social media and stuff like that. How do you manage that within the studio? Like, do people get a certain amount of time to work on things or is it just in downtime? How does that kind of side of it work? It's a little bit of both, you know. It's a little bit of forward planning from us as a studio to if there's certain days we want to hit, if there's certain events that are coming up that we think of collectively think that are going to be really, like, really rad to get something out, a piece of animation out for that event, then we're set some time aside and, and treat it differently. But generally, it'll be maybe a few days here and there between working jobs, you know, like we, we're quite busy quite often. And it's very rare that there will be more than a, a few days between a project that someone will be through. So some of these things will be ongoing and they might take a few few months to, to finish or to get out. But they're always just using, basically using our time to the best we can between projects. That said, also like um, when we have like when we have interns come in and do internships with us, we run internships all year round, and we basically have them in. Generally, an intern will be in for about let's see, like two, three months, and while they're there, they might be working on some of the production jobs. You know, the actual working the jobs that are in, which is great, really like that. And we want people to be working on actual projects, but that project might not finish within that time frame that they've been working on it. So we always like the interns to leave our interns to leave with a finished piece of animation. So we would always try and make them make also their own social media piece of work. So you're like giving them the time to do that, so they have something to show for it, basically. Yeah, it's always nice to have a takeaway, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Not take something away from it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of on that, like. If people are interested in working with Golden Wolf and stuff like that, like what kind of things, this is sort of going off on the social media thing <laughs> a bit for a minute, but what kind of things do you both look for when you're sort of hiring people, freelancers and things like that? It's that magic question, what software do you use? That's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> what software do you use? And it's like, all of them. We use all of yeah, them. Yeah, only you only get hired if you use all of the software. Yeah, and it, it's not like that's like that question. What software you use? It's not about the software. You know, we will employ someone who's very good at creating art. And it's all about the visual. It's not how you made it. So for us, we really don't mind what softwares people use because it's about the techniques. Because it's very easy once you know how to animate or to create an image, you can pretty much move that into any software because the key basically the 
the ideas behind how to animate are the same in any software, but the ideas in your brain is what makes it different. So I think the long and short of it is yeah. talent. It's just the, what can you bring? What do you bring to us? We're a small team of people. Is this person a bit different? Do they fill a hole? And sometimes it could just be timing. Do we need more people? So it's kind of, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what we're looking at at what time, but it's just talent. Yeah, pure talent and just, yeah, like, are you making stuff that would fit with our portfolio? Is it cool, you know? Yeah, there's no magic answer there. When was the last time a client paid you late or you wanted to charge for project files but didn't know how? Most of the issues we face in our businesses as motion designers can be solved with good communication. The best way to communicate your terms up front to the client and ensure your project runs smoothly is to have a solid contract in place. In talking to motion designers, I know that most are either not using a contract at all or have cobbled together one from various online sources. I get it, lawyers can be expensive and you just want to get on with what you do best, which is making great work. That's exactly why I created the Freelance Contract Bundle. Designed in collaboration with lawyers from both the UK and the US, the Freelance Contract Bundle is a set of downloadable contract templates made specially for motion designers and animators. It includes a commission contract and a freelance terms of service contract, helping you create smoother relationships both direct to client and also while working with agencies and studios. To find out how the Freelance Contract Bundle can help protect your business, your work, and ensure your projects run smoothly, go to motionhatch.com forward slash contract. Now let's get back to the episode. So basically, what I was thinking about when you were talking about this is you obviously can churn out like quite a lot of work for Instagram and stuff like that because you have a bigger team. But if you're, say, like you're a freelancer and you, you're trying to get more clients, do you think like posting stuff on Instagram and stuff like that is like a viable way? Because obviously you're not going to be able to churn out as much work. And I guess that kind of plays into the last question too. Like when you're, do you look on social media and stuff for when you're looking out for animators? 100% yes. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think it's super important. Like everyone's their own brand. You know, you are your own brand as a freelancer, as a studio, you know, and it sounds silly to say it, but the more small piece of work and the more content you can get out and you can post on Instagram, the more likely someone is going to see it who will employ you. There are a lot of clients out there nowadays and we, we, we know of them, you know, there's a lot of agencies that will be constantly browsing on Instagram. They don't have time to go through showreels or emails, but if they pick up something they like, they see, see a frame you've done or a small looping gif and they go, that's really cool. That moves amazingly or that looks incredible. Then they'd be like, who did that? And then searching you out through that form, you know, it, it's a very good tool to use 100 percent, i think exactly what henry just said like you, you are your own brand and i think the trick is when you're when you're working as a freelancer or, and, and you're on you're on your own and you're doing you're doing this without the big team behind you is that like try and just be constant with your uploads try and keep it at a pace where you can keep people engaged and keep them entertained you know it's people will always remember you if you just keep popping back up in their feet you know so it's it's about pacing what you're doing and i suppose that can be harder if you if you're doing illustrations that fine, fine design and the detail and your animation takes a long time but there's always those like we were saying before there's always those making off moments and those behind the scene bits and just to keep that kind of flow as we work in advertising we'll probably be forgotten tomorrow you know the stuff we put on tv today will be forgotten tomorrow and you're only as good as your last piece of work. So we always try and push our our work and the studio's work to be the last thing we did. It doesn't matter what it was, who it was for, it was the best thing that we could do, the best thing we could do today. Yeah, best thing we've ever created. Everyone's attention spans eight seconds long. Yeah. Um, and if you can get someone's attention eight seconds and keep it, you're doing a great job. But then your next challenge is to do it again. You've got to keep going, you know. And everyone's going to remember, every pizza can be a personal pizza if you try hard and leave it yeah, I think it's, I just think people find it hard because they're like, are clients actually looking on Instagram? And like, how much do I need to post and things like that? Because obviously, ideally, people would be posting like something like an animation a day or something. But that's not really realistic for most people, especially if you're actually working like on client stuff as well. So I think that, well, I've heard like just being consistent is the best thing like you say so if you're like well i can only post like once a month or something like that then just do that but make sure you post every month or like once every two weeks or something because then at least 
people know when they're gonna expect stuff from you rather than like some people do like I know post like every day and then they get to like after one week they'll and then they don't post for like months and months and I think that's much worse than the other way around oh yeah for sure I mean yeah pace it out you know you know give everyone time to breathe you don't want to spam the feed as you say yeah don't spam the feed you see it with a lot of people as well like ambitious like over ambition would be a killer for a lot a lot of creatives you know we're guilty of it as well that's where you have they say if you you have a project you half it half it again and that's what you will finish with you know if you're doing a personal project and some people want to make long films you know and that's why in, a, in the studio here we don't make at the moment we don't make these long films because social media is so important you can just do lots of little bits that different styles and, and it just can be exciting i think that's people remember like they can do lots of these lot smaller form contents little small looping gifts or or just even frames to get that up as a piece of content and it is to make these long films that are being entered into festivals you know they're also important but i think yeah to be noticed to, to the agencies to bring in work and it's just you know to make the art it's important yeah i think that's a, a great thing to put out there because i i see a lot of people working on short films and stuff like that and not like obviously like people are making gifs and looping animations and stuff more and more but i don't think that a lot of people believe that that could actually get you work so it's great to hear from you both and saying like no that's fine like you can just make like a little thing you don't have to like spend weeks and months and months doing like a long like film or something like that to get attention yeah i think that's like the advice we'd, we'd give most people but also it's probably the advice we give ourselves because we also don't have the attention span for anything more than 30 seconds anymore so like i'm personally like guilty of never finishing a personal project in my entire life so uh, just to keep it fresh for people as well it's good to do these short form content yeah uh, i think as well like uh, making sure that whatever you're doing and whatever art form you are doing it's in the right place it doesn't necessarily have to be instagram but you can link them all together with your behances and all, and all that and everything else. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like has Instagram worked best for Golden Wolf? Is that where you have like the most attention or the most clients from? Yeah, totally. Got, like Instagram for us as a studio is really important. I think that's just because the main agencies will use that. It's, it's the most modern form of, a, you know, a moving Pinterest pet board you know and it's kind of relevant to what we do is they've got lots of new motion features and things and, you know it's it's kind of entertainment in its own right with stickers you know give you stickers and things like that you can add in there we still use you know facebook and tumblr and we've, we've got a twitter but again we they're kind of used for different things we still post work on all of them but we find like you know twitter is really more engaging for a chat club and a conversation whereas it's kind of more for like showing off your latest short form content or your your last project and all our stuff still goes on to vimeo all our videos yeah. will end up always end up on vimeo so i mean it's it's just working with what you have at the time you have it really because in five more years time who knows if it's going to be around or if so for another piece of modern technology will take its place so it's just working with the times and sort of thinking of what are we creating now do we want to have fun with it like how can we twist it to what we're doing and is it the best platform and maybe later on it might not be but at the moment this seems to be working it's all right yeah that makes sense i wonder like are you creating like an email list or anything like that because obviously you have like eighty three thousand followers <laughs> wow. on instagram but like if that instagram disappears like are you using any of the platforms because of that reason or do you have like a mailing list or anything like that? No, just... not at all. We <laughs> hope that people like what we're doing as a studio, um, as a Golden Wolf, and would find us if we disappeared. <laughs> right. <laughs> at, at least for our families, you know, if, if we just stop posting, at least someone come round, there might have been a gassing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we'd, we'd hope we'd, uh, we'd build a fan base that people would like to see some more stuff from us and they find us and hunt us out on uh, other platforms. Or at least tell us if there's a new platform we haven't found. You know, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll let you know. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Appreciate it. So do you test out what works and what doesn't work or anything like that? Yeah, for our social we, we basically you get analytics with everything. So you can see who's seen it, how many people have had eyes on it, gender, age range, things like that. And we, we don't take it too seriously, to be honest, them sort of stats, but it's, it's mainly for the artists as well that what we work with to get some try new techniques and ideas out, you know. But it also, you know, 
we, we will then see if it engages with people and if it doesn't really work out or it, it really bombs, because you can tell if something bombs pretty bad, doesn't get enough attention or no one said nice things about it, then we're unlikely to do something like that again in a rush without being asked to do it uh, from a, a client. So yeah, we do use it as a testing method of um, also vibing what's working for us. And it helps us build our brand, you know, as a studio and our looks, you know, it's nice to try and see if we can tie different medias together, you know, mixed media or 3D with a 2D, you know, we're always exploring and experimenting. That makes sense. Have you posted something and then like instantly regretted it? (laughs) I just wondered whether you had like a specific post where you're like, oh my God, we did this thing and it was terrible and then we took it away. Haven't you you put a personal post on the Golden Wolf Instagram? Yeah, 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 probably, probably we're quite guilty of a, a few of us run the um, the Golden Wolf Instagram. Our, our um, manager director and creative director Ingi is the voice. Um, he, he looks after it. I'm pretty guilty of uh, Facebook and also on um, yeah, Instagram posting up a uh, few personal pictures I was meant to upload onto my onto my one. Some pictures, um, some pictures from dogs or something just popped up. What, yeah. What's going on? the latest creation in my rubbish cooking so yeah you know that's embarrassing so that was kind of like oh better get rid of that because no one wants to see that animated but i know um generally for work wise no we've kept up every post we posted we ride the storm i think that yeah but it's good to see the response you know like we, it's good to not regret anything yeah so, an old man in a pub said to us once down on east east london at the docks he was like never look back you get a stiff neck so I don't. So I don't really know. I was trying to figure out if it was copy slang, but I presume it means like don't regret it. Whatever you do in life, don't regret it. That's a good message to send out there. Just don't look back. Just do it, and your latest work is your best work, and that's all that matters. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of it. You know, just just get it out there. You know, don't be afraid of what people are going to say. Sit on say it's rubbish or not. It doesn't matter. You just keep making stuff. Do people do that on Instagram? Like, I feel like if something's rubbish, no one just says anything. They just don't say anything and no, no one sees it, right? No one's like on there, like trolling people, like in general, <laughs> like obviously YouTube channels. do. Totally. It's way better than YouTube. YouTube's like quite vicious for it. But you do get them on there. We've had it on, on our social media channels. We've we definitely had a few um, questionable comments. I love those. They're, They're the best ones. If you're not upsetting someone or someone doesn't like what you're doing, you're probably not doing it right in, the, in that sense. You know, you can't make stuff and everyone like it all the time. I'd be worried. When you like really worried that uh, you're doing something, everyone's like, oh, that's so good. You're so good. And you'd be like, I, I think they're just, they're just lying to us now. Like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or they want something. <laughs> yeah, or they want something. Exactly. So no, all, all feedback is, is good feedback. Yeah. And I think as well, if you're probably, if you're getting some like questionable comments, that means that you're reaching a larger audience. So that's all the way that I've thought about it as well. Yeah, totally. I think that's, that is 100% true. It's, you can't please everyone, you know. I am. Um, I've got a good little thing. I went and watched one of our animations. We did a planetarium for our friends at Adult Swim. And we've done a couple now. And I went to, when I sat in it, and it was like a VR planetarium. I went and sat in it in October in, at, the, at the Adult Swim Festival and the guy next to me absolutely hated it. He just would not stop going on how much, how unenjoyable it was. And I was like, <laughs> this is a beautiful moment in my career. <laughs> Everyone else loves this. And I'm sat next to the one guy that hated every moment. And I was like, he has the right to opinion. It's fine. <laughs> you didn't take him back. What's that? You didn't go, uh, excuse me, like, we made that. You know, he's so mean. No, I let him go on his way. He's, he can have his opinion. It's fine. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, like just sitting there, like, oh my God, like, you know, why everyone else loves it? Why are you just. Maybe like it is that? bad. Oh no, self doubting. But yeah, I mean, the guys at the Hall, we they did a great job. And, you know, we're happy with it. It's fine. Cool. So, do you think that there's any platforms that are underused by motion designers that could be a good place to get attention? Oh. Good question. Hard hitting journalism. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Honestly, for us, for motion, we use anything that will make it look the best. So, you know, I don't think there are many platforms that we, we know of, you know, like we could possibly do other, we could use like Twitch for more, you know, things like that. Sort of the live stream and stuff to give people, I think as a, as Golden Wolf, I think we can, we could probably give, give some more insight and give, 
and use some more social media platforms for better. But I think underused, I mean, maybe maybe Twitch is underused for artists um, to watch behind the scenes stuff. I think maybe people could use that a little bit more, but I mean, not many more than I know of. I think the, the, the reasoning behind that is maybe like they're popular for a reason. So whatever the audience is using the most of, you should probably use that one. There's more people to engage with. Yeah, I always keep thinking about LinkedIn for like direct to client stuff, though. I know that I did a podcast recently with Maya Perkins and she used LinkedIn a lot and she gets a lot of direct clients from there, which makes sense because it's like a business to business platform. So I was wondering whether you guys use that. We use it for talent um, hunting quite a lot. Um, It's so underrated. It is the last place you look. It's the last social media you'd use when you when you're trying to kill time. And you're, you're messing around at work and you've used all of, all of the other social medias are, are boring and you've gone through every feed. You do choose to look on LinkedIn. Like, it's known for that. We know that. But we actually do use it quite often to look for freelancers, especially really rare cases of certain techniques or, you know, people using certain programs or skill sets that we would never normally work with. We use it to check on freelancers that we know are on there to see if they've updated their status to see where they're working, see if they're available. Because we do work with quite a lot of a, a freelance basis. You know, it's it's quite vital that we keep in contact with people. And we do that with emails and have a, a little black book of people we work with. But also, like, LinkedIn's just a great place to keep a professional list of available artists or artists that potentially who are freelancers who want to work with you. So, yeah, we do quite occasionally, like, often post anything with any job roles or any positions we have for freelancers, we would we, we roll out a little post on, on that to see if anyone's around. So I think that might be underused by a lot of, especially the, the newest, new starters oh, yeah. within the industry, for sure. Yeah, because I think if you have a bit of a presence there and you're like sharing work, then if like, say you guys like looking for freelancers and then someone's like on top of your feed because they just shared something, then it makes sense that you would pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah. it's nice to know. It's an online CV at the end of the day, so it's nice to know where people are working, maybe like when they're updating their reel, they do a little post about that. You know, it's good to good to see these things. I wouldn't say it's something we, we scroll through like on a daily basis to browse, but it's a really great way to like check in on someone to see what they're up to. You know? Yeah, definitely. And I like sometimes connecting with people that I've met at like conferences and things like that on LinkedIn because I think sometimes facebook's just a little bit too like personal yeah, <laughs> you know? totally, you're like yeah. you're like business like going on linkedin like it makes more sense yeah and i like to pretend i'm an adult when i do that when i go on, on, on linkedin and like look at me being all business and like a grown up professional yeah my favorite hobby is trying to connect with ceos of big companies oh you just so you know they never accept it but it's like i know, I know really important people yeah, one day that might pay off. Like one day they'll be like, oh, hey, oh, you got animation is great. Like, why don't you do a job for us? And you'll be like, damn it, see? Yeah, I find I add everybody. It's basically human Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Cool. Great, great LinkedIn advice on this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Got to collect them all. Yeah. (laughs) It is is really important to have a CV on there, though. I think it's. Where else are you going to have it? You know, and it's invaluable to keep to be for, for bigger companies or for even us as a medium, mm-hmm. just small company to kind of see where you're at and what you're up to. Yeah, exactly. Just have it like populated with stuff and make sure it's up to date, basically, so you don't have just like a random picture of yourself or whatever. <laughs> cool. So, where can the audience find you guys and also Golden Wolf and what you do? So, you can find us on goldenwolf.tv is our website uh, but mostly our work is uh, the constant stuff is on instagram yeah which is uh run with the golden wolf and the same as the twitter handle as well which is run with the golden wolf so yeah you can come check out our work shameless personal plug it's twin henry it's twin tom yeah twin tom twin on henry on instagram. on instagram so you'll find pictures of dogs and more than architecture maybe awesome <laughs> okay thanks so much for coming on the show <laughs> cool thank you thank thanks you for having us 
Thank you so much again to Tom and Henry for coming on the show. It was really, really cool to talk to them. You can find them on Instagram at, at Twin Tom and at Twin Henry. You can also follow Golden Wolf by going to at Run with the Golden Wolf. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this show, please do consider sharing it with a friend. Please leave us a rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. That really helps get the podcast out there to more people. And if it wasn't for the audience, we wouldn't be doing this show. And I just love hearing from you. So if you have any suggestions or you want to let us know what you thought of this episode, then you can find us at Motion Hatch on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find the show notes for this episode at motionhatch.com forward slash 40. Thanks so much for listening. See ya. See ya.